Lesson 7.2a, Modeling Two-Step Inequalities. We can use algebra tiles to model a two-step inequality. So in an inequality, we have the coefficient, we have the variable, we're adding or subtracting a constant, and we have our inequality symbol. This one is greater than or equal to, and we have 6. So we have 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 6. To model it, we have 2 x tiles, because we have 2x. We have a plus square for the constant 1, adding that 1. And in this box, we write greater than or equal to. And we have 6. We have a positive 6, so we have 6 plus squares. The inequality symbol goes in the box on the line between each side of the map. We can model the inequality with two mats. We have a rectangle here and a rectangle here, placing the inequality symbol between them. This is a two-step inequality because we have two steps. Step one would be to subtract this constant from each side, and step two would be to divide both sides by this coefficient two. That's why it's called a two-step inequality. It takes two steps to solve it. Now, we don't need fancy algebra tiles to do this. We can also draw the algebra tiles to model an inequality. We can use one long mat or two smaller mats with the symbol between them. And in the textbook, it's showing a rectangle with a plus sign for the variable tiles. I'm showing it as x as a variable. Either way, it's the rectangular one, and you can draw your own. Now we can look at the symbol and tell that this is an inequality, this is an equation. And when we have our mat for our inequality, this line here in between the two sides represents the inequality symbol. For an equation, the line represents an is equal to symbol. Here we have negative 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 4. If we add a negative to each side, to each of the mats, we'll be able to create a zero pair on each side that can be removed. We have plus 1 minus 1. We can take that away. And here we have a plus 1 minus 1. That makes a zero pair. We take that away. And we're left with negative 2 is greater than or equal to 3. Since we divide both sides by this coefficient, negative 2, and the coefficient is negative, we must reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. We divide both sides by the coefficient negative 2. We have the same numerator and denominator, so we get a 1, and it's a positive 1, because we're doing negative divided by negative, so the quotient's a positive. We have a positive 1 that we don't need to write. We just write an x for 1x. And on this side, we have 3 divided by a negative 2. That's a positive and a negative, so our quotient's going to be a negative. And if we split 3 and a half, we have 1 and a half. So it's a negative 1.5, 1 and 5 tenths. We had to reverse this symbol because we were dividing each side by a negative. Emma has $12. She buys a spool of thread for $2 the number y of yards of fabric she can buy at a cost of $4 per yard is represented by the inequality 4y plus 2 is less than or equal to 12. And it's less than or equal to because she can't go over 12. That's all she has. So she can spend an amount less than 12 or equal to 12. And we can model this inequality. We've got 4 for the 4y, representing the variable. And we've got two positive squares for the plus 2. In between the two mats, we have is less than or equal to. And on this side, we have 12 plus squares for a positive 12. Now, the word per is a clue word that tells us to multiply. We're doing 4 times the number of yards, so it's 4y. 
A solution for an inequality is a number, or a set of numbers, that make the inequality true. If we have x is less than or equal to 4, x can be 4 because it's or equal to, or any real number that is less than 4. This includes all fractions or decimals between the integers. So x could be 3 and 99 hundredths. That's less than 4. It's right up against the 4 on a number line, isn't it? But it's less than 4. Here we have y is greater than or equal to 9. If we graphed this, y could be any number. It might be equal to it. So it could be 9 or any number greater. It's telling us that 9 is the least possible value for y. It can't get any smaller than this. It can't get any less than 9. But y could be any number greater than 9. y could be 45 quadrillion. Any number going towards infinity. We finished the first part. We're moving on to the second part of the lesson, writing two-step inequalities. So just remember, an inequality is just a mathematical sentence that shows the relationship between quantities that are not equivalent. Have a wonderful day, and join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.